Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Fate Sworn with me, Bring It On. Fly faster to fast travel this way. How'd that get unequipped? Why do I only have one? Dance, guys. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm getting juggled by the spiders. Alright, Assassin. You're a little out of your league here, buddy. This is end game content. <laughs> Near at best, middle game content. Guys, I'm helping. He proceeds to get his chest obliterated by a giant two handed hammer. into the portal. Like we're making pretty good time so far. That means this portal's probably going to be twice as long as the longest one we've done so far. We're doing another portal. I guess I can tell another story. Probably about Skyrim. Since Skyrim and in his Amalur share kind of a history anyway. Skyrim is usually attributed as being the reason why Kina's Amalur didn't do as well. So in Skyrim, there's a companion by the name of Feindar. Which if you played Skyrim, you probably know who he is. He's one of the first companions you can get in the game in the first town that you go to. He's a bit notorious for a couple of reasons. One, 
He's an archery trainer, so you kind of cheese your archery training by having him train you. Then as a companion, you control his inventory. You just take the money right back out of his inventory. He's also notorious because he... It's part of a pretty scummy quest, and most people don't like him because of that. You have a choice between him or Sven. And depending on who you side with in the quest, depends on who you get as a companion. Fangdahl mechanically is better. Because of the aforementioned reasons. Also, he's the only... Wood Elf companion. Uh, prior to the Dawnguard expansion. Where Sven is a Nord, and they're a dime a dozen in Skyrim. Well, anyway, uh, for my first playthrough of Skyrim, I was doing a giant quest for the, uh, the Jarl of Whiterun. One of the quests takes you to a giant's camp where you uh, clear it out of giants. I don't remember the name of the camp, but I remember the layout. It's the one, I think it's to the west of Whiterun. Um... It's the camp that has a cave that leads into the mountain. Because the camp itself is at the base of a mountain. And then opposite the uh, the cave entrance are some like stone stairs that go to one of the uh, giant spawn fires that has the uh, I think mammoth fat and cheese laying around it. Some alchemical ingredients. But anyway, I had Fandal with me. I figured it would be okay. I knew giants were tough, but I was like level two or three at the time. I was like, I can kite around and I had some frostbite poison I was gonna use and stuff like that. It was going okay. I think all the giants are down to about half health or so. Uh, Fandal was fighting one of them, I was fighting two of them. And then uh, my, my buddy actually came in to watch watch me play while this was happening. And as he comes in and starts watching, Fandal gets knocked over the mountain. Most people I think are fi uh, familiar with the uh, the giants knocking the player into the air. Well, the same thing can happen with the um, companions. And so, Feindal got knocked clear over the mountain that we were fighting beside. Like, it was... It was so funny to watch. But I was trying to play honestly, so I didn't reload. I thought about it. I was like, you know what, this is a good reason to uh, you know, change which companion I'm using. Because uh, companions also have a level as well in Skyrim. Uh, they level up with the player character up to a point. A lot of the companions have uh, lower level caps. I think most of them are like level 25. I think Feindal stops at 15 or 25. I don't remember. Then Seven, I think, stops at like level 10. Another reason to take Feindal because he levels up more than Sven does. I think. I could be misremembering. Well, anyway, Feindal gets knocked clear over the mountain. pretty good hammer. But it's not what we need. So then I'm fighting all three giants. It's not going well. I, I think I'm out of healing. I'm getting pushed up those stairs that were opposite the cave. And I'm like, you know what? It's fine. We'll just reload. Not a big deal. I'm going to fight to the bitter end. See how it goes. And then one of the giants dies. Like, that's weird. Maybe I hit him and I didn't realize. He just drops dead. Now I see another giant. His health is, like, ticking down. And I'm like, that's weird. I'm out of a frost, a frost spike poison as well. I thought maybe it was still applied to the weapon, but it only lasts for, like, a few swings. It's not something that... It shouldn't have been ticking down. And then I notice that an arrow clinks off the stairs that I'm standing on. Then I look up, and Feindal is running back down the mountainside, blasting arrows into the backs of these uh, giants that I'm fighting. So the game rendered him running all the way back, because I know they do it does that anyway, but at the time I was surprised. It's like if you dismiss a companion, they run all the way back to where they're supposed to be. It was crazy. He ran all the way back over the mountain. Like, it had been minutes since he disappeared. And he came back and he saved me. We, I, I won the fight, and so... I was pretty stoked, and that's why I only use Feindal when I play through Skyrim now. He earned his place as my companion. He came back... I 
it's one of those things, man. One of those things that makes watching other people play games so great. No two playthroughs are the same. <laughs> Little things like that. I recognize Spandol is by far the best companion in the game, but I play melee characters, he's an archer, so I mean it fits my playstyle anyway. I think he has unique dialogue too, when he explores certain areas. I don't know if it's him, or maybe it's another companion I'm getting him mixed up with. Like the few uh, companions have like extra dialogue compared to the other ones. Yeah, that's uh, one of my adventures in Skyrim. Probably should be talking about Skyrim while playing Keys of Amalur. It might be a little disrespectful. <laughs> Considering their, their rivalry. Tiva Road Amulet. Remnant of the ancient trade route that once wound its way through the Eldrith, Eldrith Mountains, connecting the Almer Valley and the Feylands. That's pretty good. I'm not that worried about the loot. It's not going to be anything game changing. And that should be the Western Continent complete. We're making some progress. <laughs> Slowly but surely. I'd offer to go along. Good, good. We can do this. Nice to see you. Getting comfortable here at the fort. See you around. I should probably get my stuff repaired as well. So let's go to Gale Crossing real quick. The rest of my equipment's probably due for a uh, a spit and shine. Oh, I came here looking for her for a quest, and it didn't. Uh... Do you want to talk then? Our paths cross once again, fateless one. I have been busy since we last spoke. Like I said, I didn't see her here. Needy souls from across Mithras have come to Gale Crossing, seeking my banner, seeking you. And I have been giving another message. 
the location of the Unbound Path, the road set before all who wish to remake our common destiny. Uh, what is the Unbound Path? In the beginning, the mortal races worshipped six great deities, the six patrons. But some worshippers rebelled, searching for a new path. They believed that a chosen one, a savior, would come to show them a new way. A way unbound from the patron gods. My grandmother used to sing me the old song of her people, a lullaby. Its lyrics spoke of this unbound path. And I believe this lullaby will lead me somewhere important. Though the journey will be fraught with dangers. Now what do your followers believe? We believe that the disintegration of the Tapestry of Fate does not spell doom. Not for everyone. There will be a reckoning. The weave will collapse. But chaos will not reign. A savior will come who will rewrite the weave. Who will purge its sins and mistakes and remake it anew. I believe that savior is you, Fateless One. We all do. We remain by your side so that we may be part of the coming restoration. I'd be glad to protect you. As I knew you would be. We are truly linked. You too seek the unbound path. Even if you do not realize it yet. Meet me at the entrance to Three Winds Crutch. It is outside the village, not far. Farewell. Your grace. I don't know how I feel about being worshipped. A lot of pressure. Hello there. Do quick. Give him here. I don't want anyone to see. All right, to the east, the far east. We'll start here and work our way through. Probably a better fast travel point. Well, these are all really easy. They're all just super adjacent to each other. I get it. I need to dodge when I see the animation. I keep trying to parry the, uh, the webbing. <laughs> it does not work that way.
Lachlan's Robe. I've mastered all of Raycor's secrets, Lachlan boasted. His relics were found unmarked among his ashes. The gods will not be mocked. Don't recognize that name either. Also, what are the chances of a Chaos Critter dropping a unique piece of armor like that? Alright, chill out everybody. Of relevant stories to tell about this game, but I really told the only one that I have since only full playthrough has been on the channel, so I don't need to repeat what's already been shown. I should play out stories before I actually start recording. Maybe that'd be <laughs> a little make things a little easier. It's like I was something on the spots now. Not always the easiest thing to do. Do it again. Right, we've seen this before already, so that's not uh then we have to read or look at. A weirdly shaped dungeon. It's designed just to waste your time. <laughs> well, I guess it is the Chaos Realm. So the design doesn't have to make sense. Games Workshop doesn't hear about a another IP that's using a chaos realm. They defend their their IP zealously. Which makes sense. I mean if you have a copyright, I mean the smart business move would be to defend your IP. I mean heck, uh, the people that own the Lord of the Rings franchise they um I don't know if they actually threatened Wizards of the Coast back when the D&D first came out but some of the races and D&D used to be uh, races from Lord of the Rings like the Baylors used to be Balrogs Halflings used to be hobbits, and uh, treants used to be ents. 
but because of copyright, they changed it so that they... I know they avoided the lawsuit by changing everything. I don't know if there's any other creatures. Those are the three that I know off the top of my head. I'm no expert in D&D history. Though I do know my, uh, my Lord of the Rings lore pretty well. to Lord of the Rings by the movies. I was, uh, was a kid when they were released in theaters. I saw all of them in theaters, which was a fantastic experience. And then I read all the books. I actually read the books after the first movie came out. the old animated movies, which I had seen previously, but I didn't put the two together at the time. So I had seen the original movies well before the Live action ones came out. I just didn't realize that's what they were. Good at some lockpicks. I've been a little careless with my lockpicks this episode. I've earned through what, two or three on one chest?
We just got this. I think this one is the same. Not better nor worse than its predecessor. So I don't think I know what Onslaught does. You get a stack of it. But I don't think it tells you what the stacks do. Maybe when, well, when I proc it, I can probably go look under my status and it'll tell me. I said it procs on anything, not just chaos creatures, right? I need an attack. Alright, let's go see what Onslaught does. What's up, fellas? Armor and crit chance. Attacks up to five times, so I guess each one is... So it's 2% armor each time, so up to 10% armor, up to 5% crit chance. <laughs> Assuming this doesn't actually increase in the description. Yeah, that's what it is. That's okay. Crit chance is nice. Crit damage is better. I mean. Obviously you need crit chance before crit damage, otherwise it's irrelevant, but... Tell me some good. As tanky some of these endgame enemies can home. get... But I, knew you can do this. Hey, I have my, my respec here. Nice to see ya. Get no way, I'm gonna wait. Respec. 20% chance to spawn a hunter-gatherer. And more chaos damage. Oh neat. ...here at the forge. See you around the forge. All right. I'm gonna respect not until uh, all the portal works. Then I can get rid of the chaos skill. Unless it increases damage with chaos weapons. I don't think it does though. Plus 10% physical damage, but I have to destroy the crystal. Alright, well I'm going to call the episode here. The next one will close this next portal, and the next one, and maybe even the next one, depending on how it goes. But for now, thanks for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next one. Hopefully I have better stories to tell. Uh, maybe I'll actually plan ahead next time. We'll see. Either way, take care everybody.